Whoa! What's up, folks? Welcome to the 12th episode of Tales from the Archive on Handelabra Games. My name is Zach from Another Letdown Media and the Adjacent Hex Podcast. I will be your host this evening. Tales from the Archive is the show where we use the medium of Sentinels of the Multiverse, the digital game, to tell a story of some kind. Some will be tales from the actual Sentinel storylines, and others will be totally original and or based on previous works. For consistency's sake, I do try to match up each story with an existing Sentinel Comics book title, as mentioned prior by either Christopher or Adam or both, either on their podcast or in person or wherever. And uh, But by no means does that make my stories official Sentinels canon or real in any way. You can kind of think of this as the Earth-603 Sentinels of the Multiverse. There will often be times that we deliberately make a play that might not make a whole lot of sense strategically, but contributes to, the, to our narrative in some way, shape, or form. We will try to do our best to win games, but uh, sometimes heroes fall, and that just makes for great stories. As with all the shows on the Handle Arbor Games channel, we believe in civil rights for absolutely everyone, and in being as inclusive as humanly possible, so any comments or activity actively working against that goal is not welcome and will not be tolerated. So, without any more delay, let's open ye oldie book of the multiverse and get this party started. I am still looking for creative names for our friendly neighborhood monorail driver because I started uh, doodling some artwork and I'm pretty pretty happy with it. It looks pretty goofy. Um, so, so far, uh, hapless Hal Halifax is uh, in the lead, but I'd love to see some other titles and names to, uh, to throw into the mix. Um, so I've been watching a lot of the Netflix series Glow lately, and while I was frankly underwhelmed, mostly because I don't have any connection to wrestling in one way or the other, uh, it did remind me of this, a series in Sentinel Comics that saw nearly every hero in the multiverse pitted against a large battery of villains. This story was collectively known as Cosmic Contest and was a rather poor marketing decision on the, editors of, on the part of the editors of the Sentinel Comics in that time period, as in order to follow it, fans needed to read a much bigger selection of the books than they were normally used to buying. However, when the big publishers started releasing collected volumes of pretty much everything, Sentinel Comics followed suit and was able to combine all the major plot threads of Cosmic Contest together into one volume, making it much easier for fans to find all the details. As with any collected volume set, there were certainly details that got left out, most notably what was Guy's up to during this, because clearly he's the best hero ever and everyone knows that. But there are, but those are all stories to be told at different times, because tonight's story opens up with a shot of the bare ground of the Bloodsworn Coliseum, as a few scavengers and custodial workers tidy up after a colossal fight on Vogon 7. Silhouetted in an arch at the far end, we can see Cargra Warfang throttling a lackey, I thought I told you I wanted a challenge this time. You call that difficult? The sniveling lackey grasps at her hand around his neck. We tried, Your Excellency. It's just that we can find so little left in this galaxy. Worthy of your entertainment. Oh. Cargra tosses the limp body of her underling into the wall nearby, and he falls to the ground, gasping for air. You have one chance remaining. Find me a conflict worthy of my entertainment or find yourself facing your own mortality as a gladiator in my ring. She storms away, and he hauls, herself, hauls himself back to his feet. Smash cut to the stands at a Rook City Renegades baseball game. Expatriate and Setback, wearing baseball uniforms that Setback had made to match their heroine costumes, that way we don't have to wear our uniforms to the game, along with Nightmist and a very disgruntled-looking Mr. Fixer, are sitting in the stands. Expatriate glares at Setback. I still don't see why we had to come here. Can't we do something useful? I think Ambuscade's back in town. He deserves a good bullet to the noggin. Setback adjusts the retro-style Pittsburgh Pirates hat that he's haphazardly seam-ripped seam the P off of and tightens his glove. Relax. Baseball is one of the few things Mr. Fixer seems to enjoy anymore. He sits back and knocks o and in doing so knocks over a beer sitting in the cup holder behind him all over its owner's feet. Before the fan can get upset with him, the sky suddenly goes dark over the stadium. The heroes look up and see a colossal, st an even bigger stadium floating above their heads. Expatriate reveals pride and prejudice from beneath her, uni her baseball uniform as the Dark Watch is tele teleported upward against their will into a new arena. So, tonight's story, uh, we are going to continue with our theme of villain team-up games. I thought this would be kind of fun. Um, 
to just hit the randomize button and then change the heroes that come up. So here we go. The only one we are not going to play with tonight is going to be Baron Blade, uh, because I have something in mind for him later. So there we go. Um, it is a four, four hero team, so we'll get these guys out of here, except for Night Mist, who is one of, one of our characters tonight. Um, whoa, which will bring in Dark Watch Expatriate. Dark Watch Setback. And Dark Watch Mr. Fixer. And the villain and the uh, the Bloodsworn Coliseum has changed its shape tonight to mimic the environment of the final wasteland. Tonight we are first entering the ring for our first challenge. Lock Happy Tan, Bugbear, Ermine, and Greaser. Some stuff in Spanish that I can't pronounce. Um, level up Leo. Ambuscade got his f teeth kicked in last week. Uh, so I, I am departing a little bit from him. Although if he comes up on random on the second game, there is a chance that he... Uh, yes, uh, she was wrong. <laughs> Effectively. Uh, he, he was probably somewhere downtown in Rook City, but uh, he was not one of the villains that Cargor Warfang abducted to compete in the Coliseum. In this round. There's a chance he might show up next round. Uh, so Expatriate is starting out with an Assault Rifle, a Flak Jacket, Speed Loading, and Unload. And there we go. That's not distracting. Setback. Dark Watch version, of course. Starting with Karmic Retribution, Looking Up, Surprising Fortitude, and whoops, sorry. Night Mist, Call Forth, Elder Ring, Oblivion, and Scouring Mists. Mr. Fixer, Bloody Knuckles, Driving Mantis, Grease Monkey Fist, and Hoist Chain. Uh, okay, so, since we haven't, uh, on my stream, played against these villains, or some of these villains before, let's quickly go through what their Vengeance-style play cards say. Um, so she's going to put in a card, Chiquito, I think is how that's pronounced. I do not speak Spanish. I have no idea how to you know pronounce some of the words in here, but hey, we'll try it. Uh, at the end of her turn, if it's in play, she deals the hero target with the highest HP 3 energy damage. If not, <laughs> it's it's moved into play. Moved from the trash into play, and the hero with the most cards in hand discards a card. Okay. Uh, Bugbear. His card, I believe we faced him before. Or we may have faced him before. Um, damage is increased. Oh, yes. The more incapacitated, the more he deals damage. Or Sorry. The more that things get incapacitated, the more he deals damage. So right now, it looks like he's probably public public enemy number one. He's also bigger than everything else, so it's going to likely distract the, te the, the team toward him. Uh, Ermin, of course, is constant prattle, and she's talking and carrying on and making a, making a nuisance of herself. Grazer, uh, I believe we fought him before in the past, too. Uh, basically... Yeah. Why did I think he was okay? Anyway, yeah. So it looks like uh, looks like public enemy number one is of course Bugbear. So let's let's start this party. A little familiar action. There's constant prattle. Living paycheck. There are no active here. Okay, if there are ever no active hero character cards in this play area, this card is indestructible and cannot leave the play unless he's incapacitated. If there are ever no active hero cards, hero character cards in this play area, incapacitate Greaser. All right, destroy one villain ongoing card. Uh, 
That's actually a really good card to get off the top. Because it only takes takes out one villain card. Um, discarding cards is something we can handle. I feel like... Uh, that's... Yeah. Side of scene, I think that might be a might be a good move actually. I'm gonna go ahead because this keeps coming back, so I'm just gonna bin that. Uh, nope. Okay. Okay. Well, that's not ideal, I guess, but could be worse. All right, so she's gonna deal some damage here. That's fine. All right, expatriate. I guess she didn't find Pride and Prejudice. What she did find was an assault rifle. Not maybe the best pickup in the world, but uh, what is? But it could be worse. So start here. Um, Ermin is particularly annoying. And I guess we'll go at La Capitan. Yep, no executing the, the cute monkey. It's adorable. Alright, Bugbear. He's probably going to do something brutal. Yep. That's, that's particularly irritating. Yuck. All right. Um, that could be really good to get rid of Constant Prattle or Feral Brawn. Actually, Feral Brawn needs to go. Uh, unfortunately, it makes me sacrifice the... Yeah. Setback. In his haste to dis to irritate... Or to eliminate the feral brawn. Trips and falls and breaks expatriate's weapon. Fuming, she starts searching around for more weaponry. Power says yes, that is good. All right, here's Armin. Ah, oh, boy. Um, read that annoying monkeys card first time anyone discards a card place it under this card would be dealt damage move one card into this card into the appropriate trash well this is this is not looking good oh wait okay it doesn't work the way I thought it did um That's really good. Each target one. Uh, let's get rid of that. No, that's really good. <laughs> yes, Cytosine, that is correct. Tachyon plus Chiquito equals slip and fall on a banana. Uh, that's... I'm gonna driving Mantis the heck out of this. Yeah. We'll discard Grease Monkey Fist. It doesn't look like we've hit them at all! Fumes Expatriate.
I don't know why, but Chiquito just... Oh, Chiquita Bananas. Okay, that's why I'm reminded of Bananas. Excuse me. This room is full of pollen because my window was open. Uh, so I want to draw that. Discard two if you may select the deck. Cards cannot be played until the start of your next turn. Okay, Mistbound is going on the very top. I like that card quite a lot. It's good options. Alright, Greaser. What do you got for us, buddy? Rude. How did that go for you, Jay-Z? Uh, yeah, that's annoying. All right, well. Mr. Fixer grumbling at the time it took <laughs> Nightmist to decide to put a ring on, destroyed the ring, and directed damage at Bugbear. Dang it. Rat Beast. Irritating. Fair enough. I know I played her at one point in testing. I feel like I won very, very quickly, but not because I was focused on her at all. I was sitting in a parking lot waiting for someone to pick me up, so. Shovel each card. Yeah, he seized the ring, crushed it, and threw the shrapnel at Bugbear's head. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that on some level. Alright. That's not useful. That's not useful. Let's flak jack it up. And increase some damage because why not? It's gonna be a little while. There's a gun. It's an SMG. It's not ideal for this situation, but it'll it'll hold. Debugview does a villain target with the lowest. Oh, well. Well, that was interesting. Ugh. Rude. Yes. I mean, so the, the, the nature of the team villain game uh, finds the villains much more irritating than they are dangerous, but then you stack that up and it's it becomes... It becomes danger. The irritation becomes danger at some on some level.
Uh, that's not really what I want to be doing right now. That's fine. And then, yeah, it doesn't just power remove tokens. Yeah, it does. So I can mitigate this. In his haste to deal damage, Bugbear musses with Greaser's hair. Greaser bravely backhands him out of irritation. All right. That's for all the damage you've done to my friends. Just sat back, irritatingly smacks Bugbear. Yeah, Ray and Glamour is really, really frustrating. I've beaten... I, I Last week on stream was the first time I've, I've managed to whack both of them in the game. It was, I mean, we managed to remove Glamour from the game instead of killing her, which was really kind of cool. Alright, Scouring Mists. I think was what I was going to do here. Yup. Yup. You. Uh, yeah. Who else are we going to hit here? Um, I'm going to continue messing with the pompadour. Ah, <laughs> uh, dragon mantis. Yeah, I don't like that. Yeah, Glamour and Ermine are just jerks, and I hate them. Alright, very top. Each target. One. Robin Sparkles. Wait. Infernal damage. Then each non-hero target. The other Robin Sparkles. Okay. Decisions, decisions. Um, yeah, Into the Stratosphere is probably my favorite way to deal with Glamour. Um, just because it's reliable. Well, Nightmist just noticed that messing with Greaser's hair messes with his state of mental, mental stability. Second from the top, we'll put Scouring Mists. I could probably pay more attention to that, but meh. All right, coming up on Fixer. All right, he deals himself damage. Yay. Deals each hero target in the play area with the contract card, three melee damage. Gross. Groovy moves. Ow, 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 ow. Stop dancing and hurting me. Why is your dancing hurting me? Alright. Uh, Bloody Knuckles seems like a good move here. Although Hoist Chain, whenever he deals damage, to, uh, they'll buy that target until... Buy one until the end. Ooh. That I quite like, actually. Mr. Fixer continues to grumble.
All right, rat beast. Oh yeah, subtle diversion. Hmm. All right, well. Yes, but isn't that? Wait a minute. Well, that's annoying. Top card of a hero deck belonging to the most cards in hand. Uh, we'll go with Night Mist, because we know what's on top there. Oh, that was probably a mistake, because now she's got no... Well, we'll see. All right, here comes the SMG with increased damage. Let's go to town. Uh, let's order this correctly here. Bugbear first. Come on. Yeah, yeah. All right, there's the tactical shotgun. Now we're in business. We're dealing a little bit more damage. That again. He's going feral again! Alright, so he is going to redirect that damage. Um, oh, but that's going to decrease the damage. Uh, yeah. Yeah, getting rid of her seems like a good plan. Yep. All right, Mr. Setback. Wrong time and place, perhaps? First time a hero target would be dealt damage each turn. Redirect that damage to Setback and or remove that many tokens to redirect to a target. Eh. Um, that'd be good if I had... Well, I have some tokens right now. I'm going to go ahead... Yeah, I'm going to put wrong time and place in. I know it's going to slow things down big time, but that's I'm, I'm okay with that. Yeah, right. Oh, man. Discarding cards again. All right. Come on. Uh... I really didn't want to have to discard that one, but uh, there you are. Uh, let's discard. Oh, man, I really don't want to discard Bloody Knuckles, but I will. I've got a second one. Turn the page. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, everybody discards a card from the top of the deck. Armin, stop playing with the cards. The wench thinks she used to stop playing with the drinks. Anybody who catches that reason, that reference is a good person, because they play good games. All right, well, um, I'm actually gonna double draw here. 
just to get some cards, just just to go deeper on, on the, in the deck. Um, much as I like messing with the deck, I think having cards in hand is also a good plan. All right, Greaser, what are you doing? Good gosh. Uh, yeah. This will redirect damage first. Nope. Oh yeah, Barrel Brawn. That sure is a thing. Ermin? No. I guess it's Greaser. <laughs> I'm gonna redirect the damage right back to you. Jerk. Also jerk. All right, Mr. Bloody Knuckles over here is still grumbling, but he is of course going to do the Bloody Knuckles move. Yeah, ow. Um, and let's get some damage marked on the bugbear. And we will destroy. Wrong time and place, because it's done its job. Okay. Thank you, environment. Alright, Rat Beast, what do you got? What do you bring to the table? Oh, Chupacabra. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ow. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> They're messing with his hair again. Greaser is getting very cranky that the cryptids keep messing with his hair. Where are these little guys coming from? Uh, reveal the top card. Okay, I'm actually going to read this this time. Reveal the top card of the hero deck belonged to the player with the most cards in hand. He discards any cards that share a keyword with that card. Okay. Um, I guess it's going to be setbacks ailing anyway. Uh, okay, that's not the worst. Yep. All right, expatriate is getting increasingly furious. All right, no more messing around. She brings to bear a tactical shotgun. <laughs> yeah, I knew I shouldn't have used them fancy all organic hair product. They're too fancy and too tasty for animals. Yeah, all right. Three is more than one. Arsenal access, all right. Ooh. Non-villain with the highest HP. Gosh darn it. Oh my goodness. All right, I'm coming at Expatriate because it's dealing the least. She will discard reload. And it goes under the thing. Yeah. I I I love games that are greaser versus guys. So much weird conversation. Alright. Now hopefully the rat beast will start coming at the villains. Start helping us out a little bit. And uh, like I said earlier, I do know where Guys is, um, but I'm just uh, not ready to reveal that yet.
Oh boy. This is getting a mite ugly out here. Uh, we'll move the submachine gun, it's not doing anything. So much shuffling and redistribution of, of the wealth. Oh boy, all right. Rude. All right. What do we got here? Tome of Elder Magic, reveal cards until the blah, 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 blah. Put some blah, blah. That I don't want to do. We'll do that. What do we get? Call forth. Well, that's <laughs> that's interesting. She's using a tome to find a thing to find a tome. Nightmist is running in circles right now. And here's Greaser again, dealing himself damage because he's frustrated that his that his perfect hair is getting messed up. Hip displacer. E. Ugh. Setback is not enjoying this. Alright. Might be time to dual crowbar up. Yeah. Let's try it. Voice chain comes back. Smashy, smashy. good thing about dark watch is they always have something banging around that can be destroyed mr fixer can relax a little bit although he doesn't he's still just as po'd as ever he doesn't want to be in this coliseum he doesn't even want to be at the baseball game he's just he, he's just all manner of, of frustrated although this uh abominable snowman is really having fun messing with greaser's pompadour Mongolian death worm. Lovely. Yeah. Oh no. Such a wacky environment. <laughs> Everything has gone topsy turvy. I can't tell what's going on. Why is the environment making a mess of things again? Yes. Uh, JZC, I. Uh, when I was younger, had slightly longer hair, and like I would go to swimming lessons or something like that, and it, ugh, freeze. I could like break my hair off. It's pretty rough. Um, no, that's that's fine. Thank you. What's our small access to again? Uh, two equipment, put them into play. Yes, yeah, no, I will happily do that. That seems fun. Arsenal access. 
Um, one of them into play. In play. Attach it to the shotgun. Time to blast Bugbear in the face. In the face! Oh, wait a minute. Alright. Hold on, I need to read the Shock Rounds card. It's been a while since I've played this one. Come on, come here. Uh, after that card's power is used to damage a target, it deals everything one lightning damage. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Let's uh, swing. Swing for the fences. Flat. Pew, pew, pew. Yeah, yeah. Lots of damage reduction, lots of redirection, some stuff happens. Here we go, now we're dealing damage. Now the lightning takes up, oh, oh. All right, so there's that. And there's prejudice, that's, that's not a bad pickup. And zoop, here comes the bugbear. Cue ball. That's rude. Jerk. Oh, right. Oh, yeah. Feral Brawn. That's not going to change anything. Oh. Horrible as I throw the cap to this somewhere. Where? Oh, there it is. Okay. Select a target to redirect the damage to. Okay, gladly. Uh, Bugbear. It's only one, but... One is better than none. <laughs> That's what you get! Ha ha! Looking up. Keep smashing at Bugbear, I guess. Although it occurs to me, Chiquito had nothing underneath him, so it might have been time to... Ooh! There's a card! Can we keep Setback alive for one turn? That might help. Who knows? Alright, here we go. Nope, that's not going to help. Uh, we can redirect at La Capitan at this point. Yep. Ow. Come on, I want to discard and card. Now drag them sideways, there we go. And yeah, he's gonna steal that, rude. Jerkosaurus! Alright. Okay. 
coma. He's gonna look. Looky, looky, I got hooky. What's that one from? Um, that seems like a very good card to play. That one also seems very good. Okay, there's the draw. Master of Magics, magic-y stuff. No, well, we're not we're not dead yet, folks. Greaser keeps hurting himself because he's enraged at Oh, Pink Lady. Sweet spaceship, man. Uh oh. Huh? Huh? Setback's at one. Ah, uh, now setback's dead. Well, thought we had a line, we didn't. But that will also make Greaser go bye bye. New. Um, bloody knuckles it up, or let's go ahead and toolbox. Yes, I saw that spoiled uh, the other day. I don't play Magic anymore, um, but yeah, I was I was laughing pretty hard when I saw that there was a card called Ambuscade. Pretty happy with that. Uh, I think it's pretty well documented at this point that uh, Ambuscade is my favorite Sentinels of the Multiverse villain. Can I hit him? Uh, well, we're going to try it. Oh. All right. Let's, uh, let's back that up. I don't know if I can do that or not. Try this again. There are plenty of villain targets available. Oh yeah, he's an absolute giant dork, and I th I think that's part of what I love about him. Hmm, oh, piper or uh, charge? Charge seems very good. Yep. Yes, I am unbelievably excited for Stuntman. I have so many stories in, in the Strictly Worse Than Wraith book that feature either Stuntman or um, Luminary or, or any one of those. Like, I am unreasonably excited for those. Rat Beast Nemesis. That, that is so weird, by the way. That because the rat beasts have Chrono Ranger's symbol, Luck Happy Tan is their nemesis. How awesome is that? Full turn. Oh, not another out of sequence play. And here. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Rude. Alright. No. Stop it. Stop asking me if I want to draw cards. Well, she's still weak. Might as well play Prejudice while I've got it. Just one more thing for Mr. Fixer to scuttle. I don't know, guys. You smell like him. Yeah, we really do. We need story. I, someone come up with a story reason why the rat beasts hate Luck Happy Tan. Oh no, they were supposed to hitch a ride on uh, on her ship to deliver the plague out to the rest of the multiverse, and she wouldn't let them on board. Ooh, that was a brutal strike. Um, okay, well.
guess. Pounding round after round into th things seems good. She's no his first edition <laughs> legacy action figure. <laughs> Things are not looking good for the Dark Watch, folks. <laughs> but they're not out of the out of the they're not they're not out yet. these guys are staying alive a whole lot longer but it was not minted <clears throat> I can do Ron Howard hold on it was not minted package it wasn't there there it is I don't know if I've mentioned this on stream uh, at all, if or lately, if not, if at all. Um, I one of the things I did in college to make a little money was uh, voice acting for video games. So I uh, to practice, I used to do impressions, and uh, my roommate and I had a lot of fun trying to recreate some of the voice talent of Arrested Development. They're illusions, Michael. God, you never understand me. Well, there's a lot of um, very unique sounding voices on Arrested Development, especially. Um, so that was, that was, you know. So it's easy to do. Some of those. I also uh, had the wonderful opportunity to meet uh, Mr. Billy West a few years ago. Uh, great guy. And at the time, I was voicing a, uh, a, a magic urn um, in a movie we were doing. And um, shout out to my comrades at Another Letdown Media. And the... Um, as it happened, Billy West had also in previous times voiced an urn, and uh, he was like, his name was Ernie. And I was like, really, dude? That's the lamest thing ever. And then uh, his handler was like, okay, we need to move along, we need to get the rest of the line, and Billy goes, no, sit down. I've had enough of you. I want to talk to this guy. And I was like, really? Like, I'm, I'm nothing special, I'm just a guy who likes to do voices. But apparently, having an urn in common is a thing. Oh wait, uh, nope, nope, nope. Really? 
So rude. Alright, here we go. Alright, Feral Brawn needs to go away. So I might be able to 86. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, yeah. Duh. Ow, ow, ow. What I should have gotten rid of there is... Well, that's two of the Dark Watch down. And the New Jersey Devil. And two more basically dead. I mean, to be honest, it turns out they're only mostly dead, but... They're heroes, they can... They can Maybe take it. Oh, one point and she'd go down. Alright. And the environment gets the heroes in the end. A voice comes booming over the loudspeaker. And there falls the heroes of Earth. But fear not, ladies and gentlemen. A second round is right around the corner. Feel free to get your drinks and snacks at the concession stand around the corner. Place your bets. Coming up. Round two. The crowd at the Bloodsworn Coliseum goes ballistic. And people begin to move around. As the landscape turns back into a rather flat and unassuming battlefield. So we'll leave the Dark Watch stranded for just a moment, and we will move over to Chapter 2. Chapter 2, yeah, I blame Chiquito also, uh, and John, because we always blame John. Um, round 2 finds, I need 5, there we go. Except not Baron Blade, so I'm going to randomize again. Keep going. There we go. Oh, that, that's a tough one. Oh, but Ermin's already, well, Ermin's already gone, so I guess we got to keep randomizing. Here we go. Greaser's already gone. Find one <laughs> without Baron Blade and without anybody who's already fought. So this is, this could get interesting. Uh, nope, we've already had, uh, her. Nope. <laughs> um, and yes, I, I did plan for the, to, for a bunch of to have to hit random a bunch. Um, oh gosh. Well. All right, hold on. I might be able to seed this here. Um, no guarantees. So, anyway, I will read the, uh, the intermediate thing. Uh, the Angel Fanatic was not used to having friends to keep her balanced. The Prime Wardens had taken up lodgings near Captain Cosmic's native England and were enjoying a night off of disrupting hooligan brawls outside local football stadiums. There were no games scheduled that night and the streets were unusually quiet. Downtown London was dark this night and the team found themselves at the end of their usual patrol route much quicker than usual. Eager for some kind of action, Fnatic took to the sky and flew out as far as Croydon, but was still unable to find any excitement worthy of their team's attention. Your police service is too good around here, Captain, she declares, landing in a huff. The Argent Adept, still trying to figure out how this was a bad thing, arches an eyebrow but decides that arguing with the Angel is pointless. He returns to his experimentation with a harmonica he picked up at a local shop. Haka pauses for a moment at a storefront and purchases a sandwich. In Maori culture, we use these periods of quiet to reflect on recent events and make way for improvement to ourselves. Captain Cosmic laughs and says, Hi, round here we call that time for a pint. He leads the way around a corner toward a nearby pub called The Good Companions. It's slightly better lit than the others nearby and looks warm and inviting. 
Tempest pulls a hood down to further conceal the alien facial features that make it difficult to go out in public, and follows the captain inside. Haka finishes his sandwich in one colossal bite, and follows as well. The Argent Adept shrugs and turns to hold the door for Fnatic. Fnatic, however, has become distracted by a bright light in the sky. You coming, Anthony? Calls Captain Cosmic from inside. Uh, Hugh, you might want to look at this. Without warning, the Prime Wardens begin to glow and rise incorporeally through the ceiling of the bar. Fnatic beats her wings frantically, but to no avail. The heroes find themselves in an arena. Uh, I didn't bring my Pokemon, cracks Argent Adept, as a group of villains materializes across the field. So this, in Chapter 2, we do find our friends the Prime Wardens, Cosmic Babysitters, um, squaring off in the Bloodsworn Coliseum. Which is, which will of course take uh, the form of, of whatever we randomize. And where's Argent Adept? up? There he is. And I don't know if this is going to work, but we'll try it. Huh! Yes. Okay. Oh, darn. All right. Well, we will keep randomizing until we get what we need. Because the villains are, of course, captives of Cargo Warfang as well. So they're not going to compete in two rounds back to back. That seems silly. Um, Bugbear has already been. Otherwise, that would have been perfect. Come on. Uh, problem is, I really... I might have to do this non-randomly, folks. Operative, Biomancer, Ambuscade, Freight Train, Playground. Okay, we got it. We got one. And we will go get our uh, friends, the Prime Wardens. Come on. Uh, you? And... You? And, oops, did I just pass him? I did. You. And finally, you. The battlefield this time has taken the form of a prehistoric jungle. Let's see what the operative, Biomancer, Ambuscade, Freight Train, and Plague Rat make of the Prime Wardens. Alright, well, um, so, Argent Adept, starting with Sadistic Dissonant, Inspiring Supertonic, Misogyny's Harp, I'm going to call that the Harmonica, uh, and Vernal Sonata, Fanatic, starting with Divine Focus, Divine Sacrifice, lots of Divine, Sacrosanct Martyr, Undaunted, Haka, starting with Ground Pound, Haka of Battle, Haka of Restoration, and Haka of Shielding, very cool for that particular version of his card um prime warden's tempest starting with flash flood grievous hailstorm and localized hurricane and reclaim from the deep and finally captain cosmic s s destructive response sustained influence unflagging animation and vitality conduit yeah it, it's it's the harmonica nap across i'm not even gonna try <laughs> uh all right so just a couple more that we haven't fought yet uh, the Operative. At the start of the game, the Operative enters play Mystical Combatant side up. Uh, Iido Practitioner is put into play. The Operative's deck is shuffled. At the end of her turn, she deals the hero target with the second lowest HP to melee damage. Uh, Biomancer. Mr. Ugly over here. Enters play flat Flesh Molder side up. Cards are revealed until from the top of his deck until two targets are revealed and put into play. Others shuffled back. First damage dealt to him each turn is reduced by two end of his turn a bunch of things gain 2 HP that's really gross I guess that's why he has such a low HP Ambuscade we've seen before Freight Train I believe we've also seen before but just in case 
Uh, Engine of Destruction, put into play, Villain deck shuffled. End of the Freight Train turn, deals some stuff. Um, and Plague Rat, he's the, uh, the Reva Corp. Nonsense. Immune to toxic damage. If there's no handlers in play, increase damage dealt by him by two. Uh, and he kills handlers if he can. All right, let's get this going. The Ido Practitioner. First damage, first time damage dealt by the operative reduces the target to view. Wasn't long enough for me to read it. First time damage dealt by the operative reduces a target to zero or fewer HP each turn. She deals the hero target with the highest five melee damage. That's really annoying. Here we go. Alrighty. Well, we're starting out strong here, folks. All right. Does Infernal Sonata say, oh no, regain cards and take stuff out of the... Yeah, we don't want to do that. That seems quite strong. And what is his... Uh, put the bottom card of your deck into play, you may activate in the company text. I mean, that seems strong. Form of a harmony and a company text of a harmony. Oh, that <laughs> harp seems real good here. Not ready to do it just yet, but... Uh, we will happily play the bottom card of the deck. Um. Oh, well, that's just frustrating is what that is. <laughs> that was uh, not helpful at all. Here we go. Her card, her, de her thing says, deals herself damage, play the top card of your deck one here when we use power. Oh dear. Well, um, I, mean, I guess we can go on the, f ugh, on the self deal, self damage plan. Goes undaunted. All right, so we are definitely going on the. F yep. <laughs> um. Let's check out powers here. Helpful. Alright, so we're going to go with uh, Argent Adept here. Kind 
Come on, play something useful. Search your deck for an instrument and put it into play. Oh, well that's not helpful at all. I mean, I guess it is, but... I mean, just having, I guess just having instruments is good. And here comes Ambuscade. already <laughs> okay yep I guess it was a good thing that I found that other instrument Ooh. sorry about that folks uh wow I guess Haka double draws just got no action. Intercession, that's not bad. Tomoko, that's actually really good. So yeah, double draw was a good move here. Yeah. Crazy, yes, but not helpful because I don't know, like, turn one you don't know which one makes the most sense to use and discarding the others doesn't seem like a good plan either i don't know especially with no like ability to build off of it or anything like that uh flash flood to environment cards that's not helpful grave of hailstorm it is all right um going for it. Yeah. Yeah, Eternal Haka would have been great there. But once again, that would be, of course, the uh, the logical decision, not the flavorful decision. Snarl. I don't know. This is me making silly noises to try and emulate plague play rat. <laughs> this uh this did not start out well for the heroes but that's okay I planned for this and Captain Cosmic okay um I like that. That's kind of nice. I'm going to go with Vitality Conduit. Oi, oi, oi. We are already hurting pretty bad here. Turn one. Turn one, death! Sounds like a Wager Master game. Yep.
I do have to say, though, as much as uh, I think it was JZC pointed it out last week, I am a huge Setback fan, and, you know, Setback is my favorite character in the game. Uh, my favorite team in the game is the Prime Wardens. I, I do, I love the way they work. Their synergies between each other once they get going. You're not seeing a whole lot of them today, but, um, you know, such as it is, it is what it is, I guess. I also, I, I really like the story behind the Prime Wardens. Alright, here we go. What was it that I was so excited about? There it is. We will go ahead and... Harp? Yes, they are the crazy shenanigans team. To use Inspiring Supertonic, allowing Tempest to keep that Grievous Hailstorm going. Synergy! Yeah, yeah. Damage to everyone! Damage for everyone! Tempest being like the Oprah of damage. You get some damage, and you get some damage, and you, everybody gets some damage. And Argentata peels up a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Aww. Oh. Aww. Oh. Aww. Oh. So rude. Ah, oh, man, I don't want to get rid of that. Um, yeah, that's not helpful. All right, that's irritating. Yeah, the Freedom Five team, pretty rad. Pretty rad. Uh, fair, fair warning, though. I'm not going to be using. Uh, well, you'll see. Things are quiet in the jungle. Prime Warden's not much on bantering. I mean, there's certainly... Ooh. Oh, is this good? Is this good? Like, I think this is good. Like, I mean, what is it? Whoa, hey, no, stop it. Stop being dumb. Okay. Like, I mean, we get rid of the harp. That's not the end of the world. He's got nothing. He's got the hailstorm. That's irritating. And he's got nothing. So, yeah. End of day is time. Let's do it. Let's do it. Um, might as well, yeah, might as well do this now while Hailstorm is still in play. Let's do it. Well, I mean, Ambuscade's turn hasn't happened yet, so there's a chance that Clamor comes out. Like, in what situation other than this one exactly are we hoping that Glamour comes out, <laughs> comes out to play? Because that would be pretty cool. Okay, alright. Smite the Transgressor. We'll take it, we'll take it. All right. Uh, yeah, that one. Be gone. All right, come on. Glamour off the top. Glamour off the top. 
No. All right. Okay, that's... Uh, well, we're going to try and draw into her big bomb anyway, so... Might as well. Okay. Um, yep, that's fine. Happy to. Happy to. Uh, I guess we come against... Does it matter? I guess it's freight train. Yeah, it's freight train because it's three damage instead of two. Seems fine. Um, ground pound, not the worst card. Actually, ground pound, really good. Then we Tomoko next turn. Yes, we will happily discard a couple of cards. I mean, happily is not the right word, but get rid of these extra Hakas. It's really, let's face it, the only one we really want is Haka of Battle. Alright. Play a card. Uh, well... Do we actually want to do that? That's fine. Not, the, not ideal, but... Whatever. Okay, there's another Hawk of Battle. That's a nice pickup. All right, Freight Train, what do you come? What do you bring to the party? Um, take that, ratty boy, ratty McRat. Uh oh, sounds going again. There goes the harp. That was going to happen anyway. Oh, hi, Choke. What are you doing here? Um, sure. Yep, Plague Rat takes some more damage. damage. Um, I think I like Aquatic Correspondence here because just on the grounds that we're going to nuke everything and having extra cards seems like a really good idea here. We picked up some good ones, so that's excellent. We will come back with the Hailstorm, of course. Incidentally, uh, you, you can assume that my commentary that I'm providing here is basically what's coming across the PA at the Bloodsworn Coliseum. That's a nice pickup. That's actually a really nice pickup. Tempest may be going on uh, healing duty here. Reaver Corporate Strainer? Yep. That'll happen. Yep, Ground Pound. You can't deal damage, you silly beast. Silly, silly beast. Um, I don't want to put anything that's going to stick in play. Hmm. I think Captain Cosmic actually is just going to double draw based on the fact that things are going to get messy thanks to end of days coming up right about now yep cool 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 very nice very nice lots of Prime Warden centric stuff I like it very flavorful alright bye bye Okie dokie. Field is reset. Let's see if we can't do a little bit more shenanigan shenaniganizing. Everybody's down in the teens now, which is interesting. All right, all right, yep, yep, that'll happen. Okay, all right. Laced shurikens. 
Our heroes aren't looking particularly healthy now. Argent Adept looks up at the PA. Oh, shut up! Uh, I need some stuff with things in play. That's nice. Aha! Aha! Vernal Sonata, an excellent card. And then everybody will decide. So you are going to put the harp. Uh, well, Inspiring Supertonic. Probably just a little bit better. Uh, Fanatic is going to, just in case, grab that end of days back. Haka, ground pound, not even a question. Uh, Tempest, Grievous Hailstorm, again, not even a question. Currently, Tempest, the only thing dealing damage. Yep, not, not really an option there. All right, Argent Adept. Resetting the heroes back a little bit. Uh, search your deck for an instrument or one. Yeah, okay. I uh, will go digging. Yes. Jew's Bell. Men of Preparation. Nope, nothing within a company text. That's fine. And we move on to Bi Ooh, Sherzo of Frost and Flame. Argent Adept considers changing the song. Biomancer. Yep. Duplex Patriot. I like it. Yeah, that's, that's frustrating. Um, she's not going to deal herself damage. She's just going to draw cards. One of which is going to be End of Days. As we put it there, brutal censor or censure, whatever, however you pronounce that. Ah, of course it had to be glamour. One more card. Couldn't go one more card down. Yep. So. I mean, there, there are lines here. Hmm. I think Hawkeye's just going to play the sponge role for a minute. Freight train. Woo-woo! Last stop. Yokey. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you guys will pardon the uh, Happy Days reference. I know Greaser is not in play right now, but let's face it, Fonzie is way better than Greaser. Play a bunch of cards. I don't really want to do that. There's that hurricane that we or hailstorm that we put back there. Very nice, very nice. Yep. <laughs> owie, owie, owie. So much ow.
There might have been cytosine. I feel like that's correct, but I'm not 100% certain. I mean, that could be a thing too, right? Ugh. Let's hope that Fonzie never had a Captain Kirk moment. Yep, we know the bell's going bye-bye. Off goes the sound. Yeah, well, that's fine. Well, that's, um, that sure is a thing. Hey, okay, a card to put in hand. Um, actually, I'd prefer to play that wooden one, wouldn't I? Ugh. That one. Top of the deck, that one. Sure. That one. Sick of looking for instruments. And that one will go into play. And a company, so that'll gain him back a couple of hit points. Obsidian Field, okay, well, that's not good at all. That's bad news. Bears is what that is. Oh, boy. All right. Well, I mean, maybe it's good. Maybe it's fine. I don't know. Ow. One of these days I'll figure out what's going on with that audio issue. But I am too lazy right now to figure it out. So I won't. Um, I'm going to go with the Sherzo Frost and Flame. We will go ahead and... that. Activating the company text, regain some hit points. Yay. Um, actually, playing another Arcane Cadence seems like a really good move. Let's see if we can get a... Uh, instrument to play. Alright, sure we can. Okay, that's fine. Oh, that's the one we want to put into play. So we'll put this into hand. We will put this, no, this on top of the deck. We will put this on the very bottom. We will bin this and we'll go ahead and play the horn. Then use this. And draw the Vernal Sonata. Okay. Do I want to discard two cards? No. I'm going to take extra damage, and that's not fun, but... Here we are, really hoping that... Uh, Hero target with the lowest HP deals the hardest. Uh -huh. Gross. 
<laughs> oh, that's that's an odd one. Plink, plink. Ow, ow, ow. What we really want is not what we've got. So we will brutally censure instead. Yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, it doesn't matter where that goes. It's just minus one. No, she's not using her power. All right, hold on one second, folks. I'll fix the... Uh, the sound. Oh, it's about halfway through, or more than halfway through this time. Come on. Steam is off. Steam is logging back in. I really. I, there's got to be like a weird setting that just says, like, don't update Steam until. You know, I'm not working at the computer actively. Because it's really like Sentinels, in many ways, is, is largely about Jean Marc's audio. Like, the, the music is so good. And we are loading. Back. <laughs> okay, back into it. Oh, come on, don't spinning rainbow on me. All right, here we go. We are back in it. Yep, chastise. Sure, sure. Uh, whatever, no. Ambuscade. Yep, too many guns. He's got too many. He needs to get rid of some of those guns and stop killing Fanatic. She wasn't even. In, she didn't do anything. Almost useless. Um, we're gonna do this, and then, or not. <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, I know people who are skilled with, with making digital music, but Jean-Marc just takes the biscuit in terms of that. All right, let's ground pound. See if we can stay stay alive another turn. Yes. Sorry, Hawk of Battle, you're gone. Now things can't deal damage. Stop dealing damage. Oh yeah. Well, he can't play a card, so he's not going to. And he can program- yeah, right? Looks like Haka of Restoration may be our play next turn. That's not frustrating at all. Mangrove. Of course it is. Oh, excuse me. Da-da-da. We were doing well for a short period when... Yeah, okay. Everything takes damage. Except, oh, Glamour's going to redirect that to... Uh. 
Okay, nothing's gonna take damage. Good grief, folks. Yeah, yeah. Well, at least the Tomoko's in play, that helps. Ugh. Stupid glamour. How did something get redirected? Wait a minute. That was odd. Oh, because... Okay. Alright. Now. The storm is back. Going out with a bang here. Ouch. Poor fellow. He didn't he didn't agree to be here. He just came with Plague Rat. Stupid Bloodsworn Coliseum somehow found a way, way to abduct Plague Rat from the block. Ooh, Chain Lightning. Mm -hmm. uh, well, the villains can't deal damage here yet, so we're, we're alive for a short period. Let's see. There's no handlers, so that does nothing. Yep. Ground Pound is a good card. All right, Captain, what are you bringing to the table here, buddy? That's not what I want. That's not what I want. Um, keeping Tempest alive seems quite good. We're going to go ahead and do that. Seeing as how Tempest is going to be our prime, <laughs> our prime warden of damage, our prime warden of Jeremy. Prime Jeremy, prime rib roast Jeremy. Villains can't st still can't deal damage. Double Obsidian Field. Let's see what we can do. Yep. See ya. You can't deal damage. Alright, Argent. What do you got? Um, so the horn allows me to perform of a melody and a company of a harmony. So he's going to gain some hit points back and deal a little bit of damage. Um, what do I have for one shots? Vernal. Uh, yeah, I mean, yes. Super friendly guy. Saraband. That's oh, just Vernal. Gain some hit points back. Seems like a good move. All right, um, yep, everybody will do that. He will. Nope. Yeah, I think he'll just do that. Silver Shadow. Seems fine. Haka on top of the deck. Enduring. Uh, actually, I'm going to throw Haka. I'm going to get... Fingers crossedy. <laughs> and then we will horn. We'll activate this. Unfortunately, it's only one target, but uh, that's that's okay. Yeah, six damage total. Um. Yeah, Biomancer's reducing that. So we're just going to go ahead and level it at Ambuscade. Hopefully we, can, hopefully we can get rid of Glamour. Soon. Soon. Uh, 
Oh boy. No. No. Stop asking. Villains can't deal damage. Alright, Biomancer. What do you got? What do you got, buddy? Okay, yep. <laughs> Flesh child. Yeah, that's 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 unpleasant. Yeah, of course he does. Um, this seems great. Go ham, Tempest. A hail storm. Uh, we'll whack Ambuscade first. Mid. Yeah, there's the Desert Eagle. And Revolt. Forgot he does this. Okay, there's that one flipped. Um, go this way. We'll go this way. We will go this way. And we will go this way. Two is better than zero. Um, fortunately, we've got to go here. And she redirects the damage. Well, you know what? Might as well. He did just heal up a bunch. So rude. So rude. Yeah. I'm gonna try that. No guarantees. I like I, I don't know for sure that that's what's knocking out the sound. Because it seems like a very odd glitch. But uh we'll see what happens. Alrighty. So here's my thought. If I skip to the play phase, donate Haka of Restoration to Tempest, try and keep him alive a little bit longer. It's only two. We'll see what happens. This is only game two, folks. There's still one more game to go. There's also a backup story, but I don't think we're getting there tonight. Ooh. Well, that's going to get him for exactsies, so I guess we go to because of the Tomoko. Oh dear. Yep. There goes the game, folks. Me thinks. Okay, I mean, still living, still among the among the living. Um, oh yeah. Well, nothing ventured. One. Uh, 
Um, JZC, I know it's hard to see behind me. Let me, uh, if I cut to, hold on. All that corner is magic cards. I also have a bunch in my car and a bunch at my parents' house and a bunch in the basement. So that that is a thing. <laughs> oh, Tempest died. So, oh, of course there's not. So here goes. <laughs> yeah, I played for a long. Well, I I started playing when the game first began. Um, I'm a little bit older than I look. Although I was only like five at the time, someone gave me a card. I was like, this is a cool game. And I was like, cool, thanks. I still have it. Um, but I started playing the game in around Invasion uh, once I finally realized what I was doing. Yeah, Captain Cosmic is trying desperately to keep calm and carry on. And Glamour's dead! <laughs> Plague Rat took out Glamour! What the heck? What is this madness? Plague Rat going ham. Uh, sure. Play a card. Come on. Come on. First time a construct, no. I don't know if there's anything he can do to get this out of this. My realization of the last couple of years was that to play Magic the Gathering, I'm either committing, or at, at the way I was playing it, I was committing in the vicinity of 10 to $15 a week. That's more, that's four times of a Netflix subscription. And I was like, I don't, I can't carry on like this. Whereas I can play my old um, Warhammer stuff. I can play car uh, miniatures that are older than I am. So I, I bagged out of Magic. I still buy... I'm, I'm very excited for uh, un Unbalanced. Uh, I have ev an unglued cube uh, ready to go. And I'm very excited to play it when un Unbalanced comes out. Um, I also have sealed product of both Unglued and Unhinged. So I'm very excited about that as well. Um, but yeah, I don't I don't play much Magic anymore. I will if you know if, if necessary, but this. This is what we call back from the brink. Unfortunately, Playgrass is going to hit Captain Cosmic, I think, in a second. Let's see if we can do anything. Um, I guess putting another card into play wouldn't hurt. Let's try and get the Vitality Conduit to get hit. Yep. Oh yeah, you mentioned that once. All right. Yes. Oh, it didn't work? <laughs> yep, there it is. And there's the game, folks. <laughs> it was so close. So close! All right. So folks, 
I am going to excuse myself for just a moment. I will be back with part three in just a second. Uh, I just need to take care of something and I will be right back. So I'm going to set this to temporarily offline and uh, yeah, I'll be back in a moment. Okay, sorry about that. We are back for part three. It's not looking good for our heroes, for the heroes of Earth here at the Blood Bloodsworn Coliseum. Don't forget, you can get freshly butchered chupacabra from round straight from the battlefield in round one. It was defeated by the villains. But let's see if the heroes can triumph in round three. It was a quiet day at Freedom Tower. Wraith was nowhere to be seen, which came as a surprise to absolutely no one. Absolute Zero and Tachyon were listening to some music while Tachyon bustled about monkeying with this project or that data sheet while helping Tyler Vance run some diagnostics on the bunker suit. Unity was enjoying a day off with Felicia Parsons, see Tales from the Archive Episode 7. And Legacy was reading the latest grilling cookbook by Ronnie Hayes. Oh, that's how you get the pineapple to caramelize properly. And to think, all this time I've been doing it wrong. He chuckles to himself as he puts the cookbook back on the shelf in the kitchen. As he does so, alarms start sounding, and within seconds, Tachyon has sped into the room, knocking files and papers everywhere. As the rest of the Freedom Five turn up, Legacy has called up a local news report of a floating stadium abducting heroes from around the world. The Wraith pulls up an extraterrestrial threat database stolen from Filter and, has, and produces a diagnostic. The Bloodsworn Coliseum. Nobody knows where it comes from. Run by a jerk, spoiled rich kid, gladiators. This all seems horrible, she says, scanning the article. As sworn defenders of the Earth, it is our duty to find this Cargra Warfang character and show her what for. Battle stations, heroes! Legacy declares, importantly. Absolute Zero looks up skeptically. You want to tell us what your plan of attack is? This doesn't seem like it's going to be as easy as taking down Baron Blade or removing Omnitron's power core. Legacy is already on his way to the Freedom Jet's landing pad. That is my plan, Ryan. Attack! Alright, so our final game this evening. Unfortunately, we're not going to get to uh, the backup story, which is a little unfortunate. Uh, because I really like the backup story, but uh, it will be one of our one-shots that I do. I, I do have a one-shot episode coming up that'll hopefully cover a bunch of these um, backup stories that we haven't gotten to. Um, of course, the Freedom Five, as the headline event of tonight's action, will be taking on Cargirl Warfang herself, the Bloodsworn Coliseum has turned. Oh, no, time cat, time cat, time cat's not what we're looking for. Uh, yeah, actually, I like that. The Bloodsworn Coliseum has turned itself into an emulation of Mars. 
Freedom 5, of course, led by Legacy with Tachyon and Wraith and Bunker and Absolute Zero. And get out of here, Grand Warlord Voss. We don't want you on our schedule. We want Cargo Warfing. All right, here we go. One win for the Heroes of Earth would be uh, greatly appreciated here. Although I kind of like my negative ending better. All right, Legacy. Starting with Backfist Strike, Bolster Allies, Fortitude, and Lead from the Front, Tachyon, with Hypersonic Assault, a Brace of Lightning Reflexes, and a Lightspeed Barrage. Say something. Ryan Frost, starting, or sorry, Absolute Zero, starting with Fueled Freeze, a Brace of Glacial, glacial Structures, and a Thermal Shockwave. Bunker, starting with Adhesive Foam Grenades, Ammo Drop, Grenade Launcher, and Maintenance Unit. And Wraith, starting with a Brace of Impromptu Inventions. I know where we're starting. A Throat Jab and Throwing Knives. Let's, uh, as a reminder, Cargo Warfang is not your conventional villain. We need to deal... We need to accumulate 20 hero favor tokens before she gains 20 Bloodsworn favor tokens. Uh, a hero target dealing two or more damage at once to multiple non-hero targets in a single turn. Ugh. A hero target dealing one tar a non-hero target four or more damage. A hero target destroying a non-hero target. Or gaining a title card. Well, let's get this going. Oh, uh, Cargo Warfang. This is, of course, basic cargo warfing. Um, and I don't know if you guys saw last time... Well, it may not have been last time, but... Uh, a recent game against cargo warfing... Uh, had me drawing... Cargo warfing as Judge Dread. So take a look backward on my Twitter... To find that. Uh, at D-E-N-O-N-C-Z-D. Um, at the start of the game, she enters this Bloodsworn Master side up. You'll notice she is not a target. Uh, Bloodsworn... Some, some stuff. Cards are revealed... Until one gladiator is revealed and put into play, others are shuffled back into the deck. So there's going to be some gladiators. Let's see what happens. It is Provocator Tarnus. Giant. Well, he's... Okay, he's Gorilla Grodd. Oh! A title. Reckless. Okay, she flips right away. She deals a ton of damage, getting herself three favored right off the bat. All right. We can do this, heroes. Hit hard. Hit for justice. Okay, all right, motivational charge, good pickup, good pickup. Um, hypersonic seems really good. <laughs> Just gonna be honest. Um, lightning reflexes actually seems really good too, but I need to draw cards in order to do that. There's nothing with two or fewer, so I guess we're gonna go ahead and, gosh, hyperson. And that'll be one for the heroes. Tachyon smiles as she speeds past the, cra the adoring crowd and waves, although she's moving too fast, they can't see her. All right, all right, hot goggles, nice, nice. All right, Ryan, what do you got for us? Three ongoing cards, so that's not helpful. What else does that do? Deals each thing. No, that doesn't help at all. Just up to three targets, one cold damage each, and X fire damage where X is the number of cold. Eh. I mean, it's gonna hurt him, but we're gonna do it.
Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> he deals himself damage, and the crowd goes wild. That's an interesting... That's an interesting move. We're going to have to remember that one. Uh, actually, Grenade Launcher seems very good here. Bink. Oh yeah, Tarnus. Right. Absolute Zero sure is the master of slapstick. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go ahead and impromptu into an impromptu to get the the combo in play, and then we get to play this one to do it all again. Yep, yep. Ooh, nice. Uh, micro targeting computer. Let's do it in play. Yes, please. And then I believe I have another card play. I sure do. That'll get us the utility belt. And some powers. And we'll go right at Tarnus. Five. You can't deal damage. I hope. <laughs> okay, alright. Okay, alright, alright. That's fine, that's fine. Because Tachyon will happily discard a thing with a burst with, with the keyword bur burst on it to throw that at the oxygen leak. She'll sucker punch the oxygen leak. Yep. <laughs> oh yeah. Whoops. How did that happen? Wait. How did that work? That's odd. All right. All right. All right. That's all right. We'll that. <laughs> all right. Back fist strike. I know this isn't going to be quite enough damage to 86 something, or to get a point, but. Oh. Yeah. Well, all right. Who did that go next to? Okay, we've tied it up. Um, see that's, see now, now we've got problems because none of these are useful. So unfortunately Tachyon has to double draw. Okay, blinding speed, that's not nothing. Nimble strike, that's not nothing. Was it absolute zero that got it? The first time this... Yep, okay. Isothermic transducer. I mean, yeah. This is going to hurt, but this should be a bunch of damage. So, three targets. Can I hit her? Or is it going to redirect? It's not going to redirect. Dr. Stinson practices excellent dental hygiene. Alright, so he's going to get a point for dealing... What? Really?
We're halfway there, folks. All right, bunker. Okay, that's not nothing. I guess we're gonna adhesive foam grenade here, just mitigate one one more thing. back over. Oh, see it. Kill her? Alright. Well, we can do that too. We'll just go ahead and throat jab. Her. Turn the page. Thank you. Alright. Um, let's see. He doesn't have anything on him. So... Well, we got a, we got an 86 cargo at some point here. There we go. Strike seems strong. Come on. Another hot goggles, okay. Yep, we'll discard that. Ready for bursts. <laughs> Do not confuse tarragon rex with an actual tarragon with actual tarragon. He tastes terrible in a Bernays sauce. Not helpful. We're going to do this, but we are going to I'm going to run this in one more time before we pop the structure.
put her to 14. Sure. Gladiators are dead, so we can just flip her back over and keep gladiators in play. Um, with the exception of Ryan Frost, everybody seems to be a pretty good health, health at the moment. Uh, I guess another grenade couldn't hurt. Yes, the environment can't play cards. We are back to just a standard flat battlefield. Killing things gets us a point. Ooh. Where did that go to? I wonder. I didn't even see. There's another one. I know, right? They they explained so much in that podcast. Um, we're gonna, I'm gonna get throwing knives in play because I'm gonna take a risk here. I'm gonna set back up at the moment for a moment. It's gonna be four. It's gonna put her to one. Dang it! Yep, I know. All right. The more the more distance we can put on her score, the the more likely we have to as, as soon as we can 86 her, we win. Yeah. That is correct, Technomagus. I mean, I guess, yeah, that's true. Absolute Zeroes technically does. Although it's, you know, maybe not the most conventional. Damage dealing. No whammy, no whammy. Alright, I didn't stealth, so she's taking the whole thing. Hmm. <laughs> Each player destroys. Flip the top card of the title deck and put it under the villain target with the highest HP. With the title effect still visible. If there are no villain targets in play, discard it. Alright. So. I guess it's the substructure. Legacy's gonna try and win this with. something. Yeah, that's exactly what's going on, Technomagus. I'm sorry about that. Oh, this is, uh... This is intense. Oh! It's close. Turn the page. Oh, thank you. 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 All right. So if I run out motivational charge, 
We can win this for justice. Go there. <laughs> Sorry, Technomagus. I had to go for the win here. I am beat and hungry and I still have work to do. So we're just going to just going to call it. The crowd of the Bloodsworn Coliseum goes ballistic. Finally, someone had proven themselves worthy to bring down Cargo Warfang and end her reign of terror. Tachyon speeds around the arena's holding cells and frees the captive heroes. Anybody got any idea? Do with, anybody got any idea what to do with the villains? She asks, returning to her teammates in the arena proper. I think I can reconfigure the arena to be a holding area somewhere. Offers the wraith. No team. They were abducted just as our allies were. As far as we know, they weren't doing anything wrong. They are each innocent until proven guilty and should be returned to their own homes, just like any other of the captive. Expatriate begins to protest, but is interrupted by Setback tossing a baseball. Well, we've still got the arena. Anybody for a game? Legacy laughs, and Haka picks up a br broken stick, which looks remarkably similar to a bat, though altogether too small for him. And the Argent Adept produces an organ. Mr. Fixer, looking less curmudgeonly than usual, takes up a seat on a bench at the side of the arena. Fanatic wasn't sure, but she thought she could hear the voices of Citizens Hammer and Anvil, providing commentary as the most super-powered game of baseball ever played began. So, I really hope you guys enjoyed tonight's broadcast of Tales from the Archive on Handelabra Games. If you like what you saw, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and share our channel on social media and in person. Uh, you can follow Handelabra on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube, as well as Handelabra Games on Twitch. If you want to see more content from me, including the adjacent Hex podcast and the occasional sketch comedy video, facebook.com forward slash another letdown is the place to be for that. If you have story submissions for me to tackle or just want to say hi, hit me up on Twitter. My name is at D-E-N-O-N-C-Z-D. Um, I do pro I, I swear that the another letdown live streams are coming back. Unfortunately, Alex and I just haven't had enough time to get uh, our gear up stream back up and running. Uh, but that will be coming soon. Twitch.tv forward slash another letdown. Sentinels of the Multiverse is currently available for iOS, Android, and PC, Mac, and Linux via Steam. And as always, in good old-fashioned cardboard and ink. You can get the game and more information at sentinelsdigital.com. As always, thank you very, very much for tuning in. Have a wonderful week, and I will talk to you next weekend.